in sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Welcome to the Scala Supporters Pembrokeshire Podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's Westerer is Besterer podcast. And with me as always is my main man, Martin. How are we, Martin? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. So I think it's only fair that we should tell people that this week your headphones are... Uh, some kind of kind of grey, black and white, they're like urban commando kind of thing. Yeah, it says grey camo on the box. <laughs> Could only be stolen from your son. And he's trying to play on his Xbox now going, why why can't I find my headphones? Am I right? Uh, no, you're not right, because this is like the fifth set of headphones that he's got. And he claims that the mic doesn't work. And I, I didn't realise this one. Mrs. the box. Box is right here. Mm. And uh, there's there's a little switch on by here. It doesn't really look like a switch, but you can slide it up and down to knock the mic on and off. So and he's he been telling us the mic doesn't work and it's been knocked off the entire time. <laughs> Kids and technology, see? Kids and technology. Yeah, that, was an extra, that was an extra 40 quid down the drain and we couldn't find a receipt for this one, so I guess it's mine. Oh, absolutely, man. It's weird these these headphone things. I say this is my this is my third one that I've nicked off my son. So it's quite handy because kids seem to go through them like at a rate of knots, and then you pick them up and you plug them in and you go, "It's fine. I don't understand what the issue is. I don't I don't understand. I think it's like trainers. You always got to have the new one, like you know." Yeah, I, I'm with Uber there. I mean, I think this is like his fourth or fifth set, and well, since the summer, he just he just burns through them. He he, he just we we got him a little uh, headset tidy, so you can put you can put them on there, you can put his controller there, and everything. Do you think he uses it? No. Does he? Yeah, and you know the wires just end up everywhere. They end up getting frayed, and all, and then the mic stops working, or the sound doesn't come through one of the the ear pods. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. I I feel your pain there, my friend. I feel your pain. <laughs> right, so let's let's talk rugby. Let's let's start right. Let's start at the end and work our way back, because we've got no scarlet stuff to talk about this week. We've got no uh, local games happened last weekend, so we've only really got predictions. And then there's a couple of like off-field stuff happening at the scarlets, and then there's the Wales game to talk about. So. It was, yeah. I just, I think the longer we can avoid talking about the Wales game, the better. Is is my opinion in that. So, yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred <laughs> percent. So, local uh, community game is back on as normal. This, although from what I'm seeing so far, there's a lot of early kickoffs, which must be so that people can go and watch the um, the game later, the the Wales game. So yeah, it's a, I think it's a quarter past five kickoff. Uh, Wales is so you know mm. one o'clock kickoffs, half twelve kickoff makes a bit more sense for the clubhouse, doesn't it? Yeah, and it allows teams to make that decision as to whether they stay in the clubhouse and watch the game, or you know, if it's not too far, scoot home or what have you. Because Narbus game is away in Vera, which that's top of the valley somewhere, isn't it? Is it? I have no idea exactly where it is. Hmm. So you... uh, it's in Wales, that's about as much as I know. It's in Wales. You talk for a couple of seconds, right? And sound like you know what you're talking about. And I'm going to search for Astalavera RFC on uh, on good old. Um, I don't know, how do you spell it? Oh, there's. Oh, my God. Oh, no, there we go. Oh, it's only by Swansea. <laughs> it's only. A, it's a good job. It's got. Um, uh, a preloaded one. So it says it's Swansea, north of Morriston. It is just up from Pontadawi. So it 
Oh, that's maybe well, that's not what I know. from me. You can see, of all the people who should know where it is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm reckoning that's within 15 miles. I probably get it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> You've learned something today, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I, all their mind. I don't blame you. Sounds dodgy as hell, doesn't it? But um, so yeah, Narbeth away in Estalavera. Um, yeah, they would get home in time for watching the game if they got that one sorted. So, um, I'm reckoning. I don't even know where Estalavera are in the table. This this is how much prep I've done this week. One week out of sequence, yeah, and I'm all over the shop. <laughs> so, uh. Quite near the bottom. That's still a Vera. Oh, you're dead, the dead in the water now. Mm. They are. Let's let's call them bottom bottom third. Be nice. Bottom third, yeah. But there's obviously They've got two wins. If I'm if I'm right in that. Yeah, two wins. But then we they, we still got Tata Steel in there. Now I thought Tata Steel had like voluntarily said, "That's it. We're going. We're, we're not going to play any more games." But they they played four games, so. By the looks of They're it, trying. well, no, I think it was because they got to a bit where they called two games off week after week, and they went like, you know, we haven't got uh, uh, enough players to fulfil a squad. So I, th- I think Tata Steel have voluntarily said they're not going to play any more games this season while they rebuild. Is what they've said. Now, I, I know they were given a sort of ultimate um, by the WRU that I think it was week three, and they said if if you don't play this week, then you know you you got to leave. Hmm. But uh, I think they got someone out. They're at least a 15 out flag game and they've obviously two more games since so mm-hmm. you know I, I don't know whether it's the case of them borrowing players on duels or whatever but mm-hmm. hopefully they can just keep going through the end of the season because I'm not really sure how exactly they work with their playing squad I don't know if it's a, a case of you know, a work a working sort of relationship because they opted out of the uh, what's that that agreement to not play players. Yeah, but Narbeth have as well. Narbeth opted out of that, didn't they? Yeah, but Narbeth... if, if you if you're opting out of that, then surely you know you've got the boys there and you've got a bit of money behind you to actually keep that squad going. I I thought that if That's you opted out of there, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, you know, looking at this game, we've got Narbeth in fourth, and you've got Astelavera fourth from bottom, third from bottom if you take out Tata Steel. So. That should, in theory, be quite a comfortable game for Narbeth. In, in theory, theory, yeah, what you would hope. And uh, you know, mm. I, I I've been on the Narbeth bandwagon this year, and uh, <laughs> I'm not getting off anytime soon. You know, I, I still have it. Had, uh, I, I think their last game was at home to Bar Guide, and they took a bit of a thump in. Mm. Um, we already know the Narbeth are, are, are fighting hard with Bar Guide and with Neath this year. So, mm. you know, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to say a big win. I'm just saying it's going to be comfortable. Two, three scores, maybe. I'm going to go for an absolute hammering and a half. I think Narbeth are obviously going to put them to the sword and they're going to destroy them for the rest of the season. And they're going to go, ah, to hell with this. We've had enough. If that's the kind of game we're having against Narbeth, we're going home and we're not going to bother again. That's how confident I am about Narbeth on <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> They're, um, I, I don't think it'll be a close game at all. I think it's uh, it's a foregone conclusion. So, down into League One West then. And, oh, big uh, one. Yeah. So, we've got Pembroke at home against Aberystwyth. Yes. Again. <laughs> it's hard to see we're anything. Not spending much, we're not gonna, we can't spend much time talking on, on this one. It's kind of a bit of a foregone conclusion, unfortunately. Yeah. And then we've got Whitland at home to Tlenetli Wanderers. And again, I think that's a... <sighs> I think that's interesting because yeah. you know, with the internationals, we don't know if they're going to be coming with their full 15 or not. Like, I, I know it's not the biggest travelling distance, but, you know, well, will, will a few boys be like, oh, I don't know, I'd, ra- I'd rather I'll be back and watch a game. I was going to say, how, how many boys are expecting a call-up with... <laughs> Whether they're going to go, oh, I don't fancy travelling down to Whitland because I might get a call up for an international game. I have to... Oh, you never know. <laughs> you never know. The way we've been going, a couple of props may well. But yeah, I I, I still reckon Clashley, if they, like I said, if they bring their full side, and I can't see any reason for them not to, 
Um, that should be a pretty much a foregone conclusion there. So then the big game, the the absolute, you know, this is the one we want to see, Sangenic at home against Krummer. So, ooh. <laughs> Suspense. Suspense yeah. is building. Uh, what, what I, do you no, reckon? Honestly, I, I'm thinking are going to come away with it. You but, you know, that, that's not, that's not going to be my choice, you know. I, I, I have some blind faith that uh, Krimik are going to come down and they're going to say, you know what, this is this is our league. We are, we are going to win it. We are going up. Mm. Basically, you know, what I'm doing on the screen <laughs> right now. <laughs> Well, it, it's interesting that the, it, it is top against second, um, separated only by the fact that Klangene have only played four games, Krimic have played five. So Krimic drew against, must have been Venom wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, um, oh, see, damn, you're good. This is why you're a Stato, man. This this is where that Stato badge comes from. You know that, don't you? I- I didn't even have to look at my book for that one. That one's just ingrained into the memory. Wow. Because I know I would have swift through with them the week after. I don't know that score line, but I know the result. <laughs> it's impressive stuff, that is, Matt. I am impressed. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> Krimi Krangene. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I, could say, I think that was just too close to call. Just because uh, everybody's playing really well at the minute. Everybody's... Uh, you know they they they're all on top of the game. They've had good run-ins to it. Um, there's just nothing to call. So if you're going to go Klangenich, I'm going to go Krimich. No, I'm not going Klangenich. I think they're going to win, but I'm going to back Krimich. You're going to back Krimich. <laughs> for, for the official tables. Fair enough. We we live with that one then. So so we're both going to call that as a Krimich win, <laughs> but I think it's going to be a a, a massive game. For both sides, uh, and and that's what you want to see. Oh, isn't yeah. it? Lower down the leagues, you want to see those kind of games where there was a thing um, that we got tagged in on um, Twitter the other day about um, like a, a an old report from the eighties and what have you. And back in the eighties, by well, end of the eighties, it was Krimmer was classed as a junior club. Krimmer wasn't even in the the Pembrokeshire League, yeah because it only just started. It was a junior club, so it was playing like second team games and stuff like that. So uh, you know, 10 be seconds against Krummer first in order to give them experience of playing rugby. And look at where they are now. Like, you know, that's that's just within... Essentially the second best side in the region, another region, the county. Yeah. You know they're quite, and I wouldn't mind betting if they travelled to Narbeth in a cup match or something like that. It wouldn't be a high-scoring game. It would be quite a oh, close, it, tight game. It'd be nice to see, but uh, you know that's that's not happening anytime soon, is it? Well, well, stranger things. I suppose no, with the Pembrokeshire Cup, uh, Narbeth seconds are already out. Yeah, so it did used to be. Everybody put their first team out. It did used to be quite a a, a, a thing. Everybody go at it hammer and tongs, and you wanted to play against Narbus so that you could get picked up. And go, can I come and play for you? But yeah, not so much anymore. So we're both going for a Krimic win there then. So into League Two, uh, uh, West Two, Kamarvin at home against Fishguard. Fish kind of had a bit of a bobble lately, haven't they? They've had a bit of a, a, a bit of a bumpy bit the last couple of games where they haven't played and then they lost yeah. and then they didn't play. So yeah, they, they've lost two on the bounce. I mean, there have been a few interruptions in between, but you know they they've been doing all right. Not, nothing too special. So uh, I, I don't think Kamal Athletic are doing that good either. So I, I think it's more or less a, a fair and even contest. So yeah. you know. Back in Fishguard. Well, Fishguard are above them in the table. Athletic haven't won a game so far. Um, so you'd like to say, yeah, that's quite a comfortable Fishguard win. But you can just never, you can never tell with Kamal and Athletic. There's always just that, particularly when they're playing at home. They're just one of those sides that can pull it out with a bag on the day if they want to, like, you know, they're, 
annoying like that. But we're, yeah, we're both going to go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to you know stick with Fishguard, but you know you got to look at the. I know they haven't won a league game as of yet, but you got to look at the sort of teams that they have been playing. I mean, I know they uh, went away to Milford and they lost by a point, if I'm yeah, right. Yeah, last kick of the game. Yeah, yeah. But it was uh, good they, they, held up really, yeah, they held up really well against against Kidwelly and against Locher. Mm. So, you, again, you don't know. It is a case of you don't know what side is going to be coming out to face. So. Yeah, so a tough game, but we're going to go fish guard. So, yeah. Then, then we, then we've got a dubious one. Then we've got a a, a hard one because we've got the Mariners travelling cross county to Hayward Lane, uh, uh, Tembe United. So, um, you're getting I'm, awfully specific today now. I, <laughs> well, say so my dad used to play for Milford, and I used to play for Tembe. Um, so. Yeah, it you haven't got a choice today, then. <laughs> it's it's one of those games that you kind of you'd expect Tembi to win that on their home ground. You'd expect Tembi to have the quality. Tembi been going really well so far this season. To be fair, um, there's been a couple of times where I put up forecasts on on uh, Twitter. That you know, like we do now, we, we, we're forecasting the score for the for the weekend, and we're saying Tembi going to win, and then Tembi replying and going like, "Oh, hang on, <laughs> easy now. Let's let's not go." Start yeah, but the something. first time you've done that, they came away with a win. So exactly, it, yeah, it's not yeah, such a bit of, bad thing. Bit of confidence, but um, I mean, yeah, Tembi are above Milford in the table, but. There isn't that much between them. I think Tembi have scraped a couple of wins by one or two points. Milford have lost a couple of games by one or two points. Do you know what I mean? There's there's not a lot in it. There's four positions in the table, but there's not a lot between the sides. If you know, we, we said at the start of the year that Division Two was going to be really really competitive this year, and it is. It, it definitely is. Uh, yeah, which 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 were you going then, Tembi or Milford? Well, I'm assuming you were going to go Tembi, so I, I I like to be different every now and then, and I've got reason behind it because I got my little form guide. I know Tembi have lost the last couple, Milford have won the last couple, so I'm in, let's say Milford are going to get was it three wins on the bounce for the first time this year. Oh, okay, well yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Tembi because I've got family play in there as well so uh, yeah I best not go against Tembi like you know so yeah yeah you okay. might have to buy a few extra rounds otherwise I don't go that far I'm not that dull I just avoid them for a while <laughs> <laughs> so down into division three the key league the key division the only one that matters really uh in pembrokeshire it's essentially so, the pembrokeshire league isn't it pembrokeshire league with a couple of invitees from outside so aberrera on at home to langham uh, it should be a comfortable win for aberrera on there i can't see anything yeah that. i'd love for langham to pull it out i really would but uh you know it's aberrera on going really well this year so yeah and they're at home yeah, but you do just feel, you know, if Langham can pull out something through the season, yeah, I don't think anybody kind of like grudge on that. Do you know what I mean? They they they'd quite like. I think everybody apart from whoever they play in would quite like to see Langham pull a couple of wins out. But yeah, you know, I I think Langham need just need one more one more key ingredient, and they could be a really really great side. I think if they got a coach from the area, I. I I think there's a guy called Lee Griffiths who's available. I think if he went into the coaching setup, I think he could really boost them, get them up a division or two. Oh, if 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 I told my wife that I was thinking of going back to coaching, I think uh, I'd be struggling to walk straight for a couple of months after that. There'd, there'd be a few hefty. That's your team, thing. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've I, I've absolutely categorically promised that I am not going back into coaching in any way, shape or form. I'm going to stick doing this instead. So, uh, yeah, so we're both going for Aberray on home win there. And then Cardigan and Clannabother. That's a bit of a difficult one to call, that one, I think, isn't it? Um, 
Yeah, but it's, it's, it's the same again being international week. You know, how many of uh, Santa Barbara's boys are going to really travel to Cardigan? Mm. So I'm, I'm going to back Cardigan for the win. How far away is Santa Oh, see, there's it's a geography we'll, we'll lesson. on the go, is it? <laughs> it can't be that far away, can it? Because that's the whole point <laughs> of, of splitting the leagues down. You know, we've got Lampeter, which is probably about an hour away. I'd say that's the furthest. Oh, it's, it's 24. Oh, no. Driving distance is 37 miles. So you're talking about an hour. Yeah. And I suppose it's Cardigan as well in it, which is the arse end of nowhere. So um, it always takes about an hour to get to Cardigan, no matter where you start from. You could start in St. Dogmals and you'd still take you an hour to get to Cardigan. So <laughs> it's, um, yeah. So if, who, who are we calling on that? Are we going to go Cardigan because it's at home? Yeah. And Yeah, okay. I'm, call, I'm going Cardigan. Okay. So the next game then, so we've got a couple of local derbies, but this is proper, proper local derby. I mean, you could walk between these two quite comfortably. Larn and St. Clair's. Um, and St. Clair's, again, they, they're another really young side. They've only been going, what, 10, 15 years? When, when I played my very first game of rugby when I was in school, um, I played on the pitch that is now the St. Clair's home pitch, um, which at the time was the school pitch for, um, or what was it called? A school govern something Griffiths. Or something. It was, it was in, on the school pitch there um, was where I played my first uh, first game of competitive rugby when I went up to senior level um, and I played my first game for the seconds. The seconds were short and uh, there was no youth game and I was about 15. So I played my first senior game uh, away against Sinclair's seconds as well. So uh, that that pitch is really quite strange for me. It just like, that, that's one of those places where I made the debut twice. Like, so yeah, Larn against Sinclair's. How are you how are you going to call that? One? Lesson as well. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell that there's no Scarlets game this week, can't you? <laughs> We're really struggling to find yeah, things to yeah, talk stretch. about. So we talk about you were an early rugby career. <laughs> Let's not talk Back about in the that. early sixties. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I'm thinking there, mate. Right? <laughs> so ah, uh, go on, you can cut it out. No, focus, now. focus. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, they're both undefeated, which you know it it does go to show you how strong Lana, mm. which is it, it can't be underestimated. But on the flip side, St. Clair's have just looked so impressive for so long. I I can't see them unless. You know, something outside, an outside force comes in and stops it, whether or not half their boys disappear for every reason. I, I can't see them losing a, a league game this season. Mm. Well, there's no excuse for I need to get home early to watch the game because half of them live in the other town anyway. So, you know, they, they, there's really no excuse there and they'll be walking to the pitch wherever it is. So, yeah, I just think Sinclair's have just got a bit more class about them and I, I think Larn have probably got it up front and St. Clair's have probably got it in the backs if that makes sense you know the end. so it, it depends how that game goes but I'm going to call I'm going to go St. Clair's for that one just because yeah I, 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 I've seen them play once and their backs just looked slick you know they, they did look really really slick so yeah that's why I'm calling on that one for me so which, which way are you going to go? You'll go St. Clair's as well. Same, yeah. same St. Clair's. You know, I, I'm I'm going to back them to be undefeated champions of the league this year. Oh, okay, cocky. So another derby next. Yeah, hey, I did then. back Haverford West at the start, so come on. Yeah, I know. Well, Haverford West the next, yeah. And they're away at the Quins. So this this one's going to be an almighty battle. Um. I mean, it, it is a proper, proper local derby. It's one of those games where both teams feel they should be in the division above. Both teams have had a bit of a a rocky journey downwards to, to League 3. Um, and both teams are in that rebuilding process and, and, and starting to kind of build that momentum to go back up, you know. So 
it's a really, really interesting game. But then whenever, you know, whenever it's a Quinn's game at home, there's always going to be a bit of niggle there. Always, always going to be a bit of niggle. You know, they they won. The, they both won two games, lost three games. Uh, I think Halford West have got bonus point, uh, try score and bonus point, which is what puts them above the Quins in the table. But there's literally nothing between them. Literally nothing. So which way you no, go? No, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stick with Halford West. You know, I, I did back him early on to uh, go on and get promoted. But, you know, things haven't quite gone the way that I unfortunately predicted. <laughs> So I, I I mean the, the level on points for St David's you know how, how often can you say that? Yeah. It's so good point, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Haverford West. I I think they they haven't they haven't a bit of a resurgence. I mean, they they did lose the last game, but they had a few wins before that. So I I think think they're building back up a little bit faster than uh, the Quins are. Yeah. So I'm okay. gonna stick with Haverford. Well, I'm gonna go the other way. For two reasons on this. So, one, we obviously interviewed the Quins earlier in the season, and um, uh, I say the, the the boys that they've got down there, they got some some really really quick boys, and um, and I quite like the way they're trying to play the game. It isn't quite there yet, but the way they're trying to play the game is is quite good. So, but does this mean we're going to get some live coverage on Saturday? No. No, I'm up at no, Cardiff on no. Saturday. No, I'm not. I'm not even going to the game on Saturday. Well, I might be going to the game, but um, my boys got a, a university open day up in Cardiff on Saturday, so I'm spending. Oh, you bring him back across the border. Good, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> well, trying to, but um, yeah. So I'll be up in Cardiff all day, so I won't even get to see, you know, anything on, on Saturday. I got. I got to ask: Is it Cardiff Uni or Cardiff Met? It's Cardiff Met. Because he's so uh, my boy, he's obviously a rugby player, but he's an athlete as well. So um, he's uh, 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 he's not bad on the old. Can be a rugby don't. player without being an athlete. I got I took from that statement then. <laughs> no, he's he's a proper full-on international athlete. Um, so which he hasn't been able to continue with while he's been away. So coming back home to somewhere like Cardiff Met or Swansea where he's got indoor training facilities is quite appealing to him. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where I'll be on Saturday. But to finish what I was saying, <laughs> so, I'm gonna go, <laughs> so I'm also going to go for the Quins because uh, I think one of them would probably kneecap me if I if I didn't go for the Quins. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a hell of a game again. A bit, bit like the um, Lance and Clare's game, you know, it's, they're not going to be high scoring games because the teams are going to kind of cancel each other out. But I think it's going to be a cracking game. Cracking, cracking. I reckon game. we're going to get a few 12 try thrillers now. <laughs> well, 12 try thriller, St. David's at home to Lampeter. Now, if you're Lampeter. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a 12 try thriller. It's going to be the wrong way for St. David's. <laughs> but. If you're Lampeter, right, and everything's going well for you so far this year, yeah, you haven't lost a game, you're second in the table, and then you've got an international weekend and you're away in St. David's. Now, what does that scream to you? Because to me, that that's screams... That. Absolutely. I mean, that's... That's, that's, uh, that's fancy dress... That's a late night back, and that's uh, don't wait up for me, love, because I don't know what time I'm going to be home, because it's going to be a big one, and it might get messy. Um, and we don't know if the bus driver's coming with us or not. Yeah, I'd, I've got some bus driver stories as well, I could tell you. <laughs> I'll tell Next you week. off. I'll tell we'll you them off. Yeah, <laughs> travelling on the bus from West. I don't know what it is, but when you travel on the bus from West Wales, you, you tend to travel quite a distance. And if your bus driver isn't particularly interested in the game, nine times out of ten, they will head to the bar. And the amount, the amount of times I've been sat in the bar next to some bloke who I don't know, and he's been sat there drinking, and then you get on the bus and you go, oh, there's that old bloke. Shh, he's driving the bus. Fuck. Oh, crikey. <laughs> So, uh, oh yeah, I got a couple of stories I could tell you about that. But 
Yeah, so anyway, Saint, uh, I'm going to go, right, for St. David's to pull off a shock. I genuinely am. Because I, I just... Uh, I just think there's such a good feeling in St. David's Club at the minute. I say it's a, there's been a bit of a break, a bit of a week off. You might lose a bit of kind of enthusiasm for your your long trip to St. David's. Um, yeah, I think that Lampeter are just going to not be all singing or dancing. St. David's are going to are going to take it. So that's my shock for the round. That is my shock for the round. Yeah. I, you know me. I don't. I don't do shocks. I I do things very statistically. Mm. My my biggest shock was you know calling Krimich over Flangenich. So uh, <laughs> not a lamp for the win. So uh, last game then is Tregaron at home against Nayland. A bit of a trip again for Nayland into the uh, arse end of nowhere into the abyss that is Tregaron. Um, I I. I can't see Nayland struggling too much there, can you? No, they they should, and they should be nice and comfortable for them. I mean, it, it'd be good if it was a, a bit of a match-up, just so, you know, the boy can have a decent run out. Mm. But And I, I don't mean this to disrespect Trigaron, I really don't. But, you know, they are exactly, doesn't seem to put that much of a fight this season. So no. I, I, I'm expecting mm. a comfortable victory. Well, they're, they're bottom of the table, and their last two results were 62-6 loss and 69 nil. Do you know what I mean? It, they're, they're not exactly, like I say, they're, they're not exactly putting people under a lot of pressure. Um, let me just have a scroll down. No, but, but in fairness, those last two losses came against first and second in the table. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. It was St. Clair's and Lan. But then you look down a bit further back, um, Langham beating 24-5, you know. So you'd like to think that Nayland, Nayland are going to do something similar. So we shall see. We shall see. But that's. Uh, I think we're both going to go with Nayland on that one. Yeah, so, it'd be cruel not to. Yeah. I think the bit that sticks out for me from that, yeah, is the next league game is 3rd of December. And that when you look at the fixtures, you go through the fixtures and the next league game is 3rd of December. I think there might be a cup game. I'd hope that there's a cup game in between. Yeah, there's but... a lot of rearranged fixtures for the 26th. I'm not uh, entirely right. sure how many teams are actually playing that day. I know Aberystwyth are. I think Tembe might be as well. But I... I... I don't think it's going to be a full round. A half round would be a decent call. Like we discussed with our cup competition last week, I can't really see... Uh, it's it's not building to a great crescendo at the end of the, the first round sort of a thing, of the, the end of the, 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 the pool stages. It's kind of just gone a bit flat. So, like I say, it might be a bit of an opportunity for people to kind of see what's happening and and take stock for a while. But there we go. So people might have a game in a couple of weeks. They might not have a game in a couple of weeks. Who knows? We shall see. So We shall. We shall. (laughs) (laughs) Just a very delayed, we shall. We shall. Oh, yeah. So Scarlet's news for this week, then. Let's move on to Scarlet's news. Anything of interest that, that has picked your 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 fancy so far this week? Uh nothing major. They had a nice week off, mm. which you know is it's good after a long seven game slog. Uh Lee Blackett started today, which can only be good. And if this podcast comes out in time, there's a meet the coaches event in the Quinell Lounge at seven o'clock on Tuesday the eighth of November if anyone's interested. So if anyone is interested in that, because I'm going to try and get this out um, either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. So if they are interested in it, how do they kind of, do they need to book themselves on? Is it free? What do people need to do? Oh. No, it's, it's free. It's a Cree 16 event. I mean, you, you you can join up and be in a me- and be a member. That's all free. They do events throughout the season, which is, is brilliant. You know, they've done a, a view the cap watch the captains run against the Bristol team at the in the preseason game. They do a few 
meet the players, meet the coaches throughout the season. They are the well, they're the ones that in the Radigay Centenary Gates, which are now at the front of the park. They are responsible for you know getting them back up to standard and putting them in. So mm-hmm. you know they they do a fair bit with the club, so it's always good. Mm-hmm. So what kind of did I did I say it was free what you had to book on? I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. So it's free and you you yeah. so... uh, you, you can like if, if, yeah. If it's like all the ones before, like I, I, I haven't booked on to them and I've just turned up. You right, know, there's okay. there's no all they haven't sent out no email to say you need to book your place or anything. So it's literally a, just you know, turn up, it's big enough. If you've ever been in the canal lounge, mm-hmm. it, it can hold, you know, quite a few people. And what kind of time is that? Uh, seven o'clock. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm busy doing my hair tomorrow. Unfortunately, I got salsa. Yeah, it looks like tonight. I can do with a dye. <laughs> I- I'm expecting a jet black look from you next week. Now, <laughs> maybe, maybe a trim of the eyebrows and contact lenses. You know, but, it'll be a whole new look for you. Yeah, a Tuesday night is genuine. Me, my salsa dancing night. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, it's it's salsa dance and night. It's the one night of the week where I go right. Okay, let's go and do something um, without the kids and and what have you. So it's it's Tuesday night like salsa night. <laughs> yeah, so back to salsa dancing. What what was going on there? Genuinely, that's what I do on a Tuesday. That's that's my kind of um, uh, attempt at staying kind of flexible and moving and and what have you instead of just sitting at home and doing nothing on a on a Tuesday night, so yeah, that's, I quite like it. It's it's enjoyable. It's something different, you know. It's, well, it's I, not... I'm expecting an intro to salsa demo now over the next few weeks. Being as all we've got time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd learn much. I'll be honest. I'm I'm more likely to get a call up for um uh, for for the Welsh team than I am to strictly come dancing. <laughs> It's 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 I'm I'm quite far away from where we need to be, but it's good fun. It's good fun and it's enjoyable. <laughs> so back onto the rugby. One thing that I did. Oh see, yeah, rugby. Yeah, rugby. Yeah. So we spoke last week about um, holding young players and academy systems, what have you, and, and and I mentioned a guy by the name of Josh Hathaway, um, who was then confirmed or on the day after Thursday or Friday, whenever it was, as leaving and going to Gloucester, which, uh, you know, it's not been a great secret or anything for, for quite a while, but it's just seeing, it's one of those things that um, can easily slip under the radar, you know, cause he's, he's not a senior player. He's, he, he's a um, academy player, but He's absolutely the reason why we need to change what we do in our academy. Yeah. And I got involved in a couple of conversations with people today on Twitter, which is never a good start to a sentence, to be honest. Oh, I, I, I've, I've got to see this now. Is this as us as the podcast or is this as you? I think it was as me. And, oh, and I was kind of... <laughs> Well, no, I was having a conversation and basically saying, you know, there's a feeling that there's nothing wrong with the academy system. I go, well, actually, yeah, it is because... There's nothing right with it either. Uh, yeah. Players that have come through from uh, into the international setup. Yeah, you've got um, Chinza's come through Exeter. Rafael has come through... Um, Where does he play? Leicester. Yes, yeah, so, so has, did he come through the Leicester system? I'm fairly sure he came through the Leicester system, didn't he? It was I'm he didn't not come sure. But he didn't I think come it through... might have been Pencord because I'm I think I saw a photo of him and Costello together. Right, okay. I'm sure we had something about Pencord. I'll have to we we'll have to double check that. Well, Costello came through Leicester Academy, you know, and. There's there's very few boys coming through now. Louis Rusamic came through Gloucester, you know. So the boys that we're starting to produce that are coming out at the top level aren't necessarily coming through the Welsh Academy system. And when then you see boys like Hathaway 
leaving, you know, so he, he's been signed to Scarlets. He's from Aberystwyth. He he was picked up early, but and and this is kind of the point that I was trying to say to people earlier that he may well be in the in the Scarlets Academy, but he he either stays at home in Aberystwyth, and he can't play in the um, in the league, you know, the the under 18s league. He'd have to go to Sandovery, you know, which from Aberystwyth, all right, it's not a massive distance. It's still half an hour or so, but you know. That's a private school. You've got all this. It's not as simple and straightforward as going to your local college or your local school. So you can't go to College Cigar or anything because that's, you know, an hour, hour 15, hour 20 away each way. That's two hours at least every day on the bus back and forth. So you start to look at it and you go, right, okay, so we, why has he gone elsewhere? Why has he gone over the border to play his rugby? And, you know, it doesn't take a genius to work out that actually it's easier to go and play your rugby in England than it is to play in your hometown. And and that's just a ridiculous system and a ridiculous way to try and structure our rugby, you know? We, yeah, it's uh, no secret either that the English colleges' facilities are well, well above our college system eaten up. massively mate massively i say so, so my son is in harpery as well yeah and you, you drive into harpery and you drive past two pitches that are on either side of you right they, they they're not even playing pitches they are as flat as you like they they like carpets they, they're not even practice pitches they're just the place where you go and mess around. Like the the old pitches, their fifth pitch is about the equivalent of Narbeth's first team pitch, yeah. And and that's the difference in standard that we need to to change. Yeah, Narbeth. So I'm I'm just picking on Narbeth because they're our you know highest level team so far. Narbeth doesn't have its own gym. You know, what? within well, doesn't have its own gym within that that clubhouse, yeah. And that is, is they, they use gyms; they've got gyms that they use, but it's not their gym, yeah. And Hartbury, you've got a choice of four different gyms with different setups and different things and, and what have you, you know. And we have to do something. That we can't sit there and go, it's okay because we're producing players at the top level. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You know, we're, we're yeah, also no, missing. I, I, I think I, I do think we need. I, I don't think there's going to be much improvements in that system in the short term. I think probably the best we could really do at the minute is look to Bath, Gloucester, Bristol, and try to work to some sort of academy agreement with them. Sort of, you know, either give them a bit of, bit of money to allow our boys to go there or, or work some sort of arrangement. And we could even go one further and look at working with London Welsh because the facilities in and around Richmond and London are obviously massive. Mm. And if we could put the boys in that sort of system, I, I mean, they could be 16 and they, right now, I, we all know London Welsh are not the team they were, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But, you know, where they are in the leagues now, you could send a load of boys over to college, wherever they are, and they could play for London Welsh first team on the weekend and still be getting the college games and rugby that way. Mm. I, I just think that we, the, there's no plan in place to, or it doesn't appear that there's a plan in place to do anything about the the the, the structure of rugby within Pembrokeshire, within West Wales, within the Scarlet's region. You know, Scarlet's, like we said last week, Scarlet's region is massive. Geographically, it is massive. And you compare that to the Ospreys region, which is heavily um, populated, but geographically not that big, you know. And 
we we need to do something to account for the fact that our boys are so spread out, you know, massively, massively spread out, because I know we're missing a whole load of players. You know, I'm, I'm I mean, not... I I have got a bit of a solution in mind, but it's not going to suit a lot of people. I mean, it it didn't suit a, a boy I was uh, playing in school with. You know, I, I'm I'm from the Ronda originally, and I think when we were fifteen, uh. One of the boys, he was offered a Scarlet's under under 16s contract, you know, for three years just to you know go and play up there. Mm-hmm. And obviously, he's not going to be able to travel back and forth, being 15 at the time. And they offered him housing, and mm-hmm. it, it didn't work out for him. It just, I think, he spent about four or five months, and he was just really homesick. But I think if we introduced a sort of halls of residence with colleagues who are or somewhere just a little bit closer with the Scarlets just so you know, they have access to the facilities. I think that would be mm. a step forward and not massively expensive or time-wasting. Yeah, and I'd agree with that because that's certainly one of the... Be- if, if you've got a whole residence there, even if it is a dedicated Scarlets Academy, you know, like um, Worcester have got a dedicated Worcester or had a dedicated Worcester Academy building where the majority of the academy boys lived. You know, that that is where they, they lived and they did go to local college, but some of them weren't in college. They still lived in that academy block and they had access to all the training facilities and they had access to, uh, you know, everything that they needed was there. Something like that. I'd say needs to be quite high up on the agenda for um, Scarlets, for Colleague Cigar or, 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 you know, other colleges around. It doesn't necessarily need to be Colleague Cigar, but we need something that says to local boys, you know what, it's, it's okay to, uh, to, to stay here. It's okay to stay in Wales and, and, and play your rugby and develop your rugby in Wales because, at the minute, it's when it's easier to go to Bristol or Hartbury, or um, I know a couple of boys have gone um, like further along to um, Swindon. And um, which which one would they be going to if they were in Swindon? I don't know. Anyway, they they, they were some team that's the other side of Swindon. I know boys are looking at Exeter if they can go down to Exeter College and then develop so that they're in the Exeter system, if you're with me. You know, that shouldn't be what players are thinking. We should be no. we should be going, yeah, you know, we want you to stay here. We want you to play for the Scarlets. This is, you know, you take your boys to Parker Scarlets when they're seven to, to watch a game. And it's usually at halftime. You know, they're usually playing at halftime or whatever, and they get bitten by that bug, and they're like, yeah, this is it. I've been on the park. I'm going to end up, I'm going to play for the Scarlets. This is what I want to do. And and you, you don't want to take that dream away from me. You don't want to give them reality and go, actually, if you went to, if you went to Gloucester or Bath, you know, that would be better. You, you don't want to give them that. You want to, you want to, you want to build that dream and say, come and play for the Scarlets because this is going to be amazing. And I just, I just feel we're missing that bit. There's that bit in the middle that we're missing that we're not, um, we're not capturing everybody that we possibly could and given it's them the that best. 16 to 22 age range that it's just a massive time in your development and it is when you find out whether or not you have what it takes to be a top end player and i i know we already have links with Aberystwyth, with uh, uwtsd with swansea but i don't think those links are strong enough either because you you look at the range of courses and education offered over the border where they can stay local to the rugby facilities. I think that's something that we need to work on as well, because obviously rugby careers are short nowadays, and oh, the boys need something to do afterwards, obviously. Mm. And you know, university life is, is is slowly becoming a massive part of being a rugby player. Like mm. we've already men- mentioned, Chris. Shunza, I, I can't uh, pronounce that name. Shunza, Christian Shunza, with a, a silent T. But you know, he's in he's in Exeter University, the same as David Jenkins, mm. with you know, 
those three, four years there, I think that's a massive gap as well that we need to look at. Well, I was at, so obviously that's the age my boy's coming up to now. So I was at Swansea Uni Open Day um, was it last weekend or the weekend. It must be the weekend before. Yeah, it wouldn't have been last weekend. So weekend before. And they were doing it. You know, you see in the films where they put those little um, balls um, on like your joints and what have you, and you can walk and the camera will pick up how you're walking with the joints and things like that. So they've got that system there, pressure pads on the floor and all of this kind of stuff. And so the, the, the woman's doing the lecture and she's saying, and we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. And I'm just looking at it going, this is really cool. This is, go on, go on, run again. Go on, run again. Now do a jump. Go on, do a jump. <laughs> how high can you jump? And it was like being a little kid again. It was, and, and I was looking at my boy and I said, you know, to, uh, what do you think of this then? You go, oh, I can't wait for a play on that. No, it's, you're not here to play. So this is a proper scientific, you know, this is a <laughs> high-end sort of thing. This is about analysis. This is about how you do your sidestep. This is about how you run. You go, yeah, but you could have a lot of fun on it, couldn't you? So, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. And, they, you know, we were talking to some of the, the lecturers thereafter, and they, they were saying how Scarlett's and, and Dwayne Peel have been in the week before looking at stuff and how they were looking at doing more stuff with the Scarlets to kind of store up that relationship, you know, because it's dominated by Ospreys. Everybody yeah, else has one. Isn't it? Yeah. So the the more we can get in there, the more we can use their facilities and the more boys we can kind of pull through Swansea Uni and, and keep them. Because it's only 15, 20 minutes most, you know, away from from the from the park so it's not like it's a massive distance to come and train but yeah it, it is quite interesting to to be sitting there and, and looking at that stuff and, and you're right that's those are the kind of relationships that we need to build and we need to develop it's just think we're starting off so far behind everybody else you know look at the irish system even the scottish system is just so far developed from where we are but yeah, by the time you all lot get there, you'll be fine. We'll have it sorted by the time you all lot get there, mate. Oop, oop, yeah, another, another 10 years, another 10 years. <laughs> it, it, it will fly by, it will fly by. So, yeah, so that's Scarlet's news for the week. As I said, it, uh, it would be good to see a couple of local people up. Having a, uh, do we think Lee Black is going to be there tomorrow night? Do we, I, yeah, I expect so, yeah. As, as far as I know, it's the full setup. Cubby's going to be in there. Emmy um, Phillips is there. That that at least that's what I I've been led to believe because we there's a little you know question itinerary that we've got yeah, yeah. there's specific questions for these people. Right. So I'm I'm assuming they are meant to be there. Cool. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. So maybe maybe next week we can have a chat about how that went because that'd be quite good as well, wouldn't it? I make it. If I make it, because you know, you know, it's like having kids. You never know what's going to pop up. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we're at that part of the show where we 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 got nothing else to talk about. So we have to talk about the Welsh game on the weekend. Do we? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's. Yeah. I mean, oh God. Yeah. Yeah, see so your 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 face is how I'm looking, uh, how I'm feeling, mate. It's it's uh, you know that first half. If we separate it into the first half, and then the first half, there were a lot of positives. You know, I thought felt we we actually started quite bright and we let in two soft tries, but our attacking was was not bad. You know, and then then we scored a couple and we were coming back into it, and it felt like right, you know, the game is on, the game is afoot. This is it. We went in. Half time, what are we? Ten points down at half time, didn't we? And then we came out start second half and we slotted a penalty. And you're like, okay, we're back in this seven points with we, you know. And then they just ran away with it, and it was just really. I I I even gave up swearing at the telly by the end. It was it was <laughs> that bad, but yeah. What, what, what did you make of it? I mean, there there were a few players that you know they they did put in good shifts. You know, you you really can't fault the likes of Ken Owens who mm. 
he was basically a battering ram. That's all he done the entire game. Mm. But that's something we didn't see. And then, took his kid to the and then took his kid to the fireworks. Yeah, the next day. Okay, sorry, you know, we <laughs> miss this on the side. We, we saw we saw him up getting his uh, getting, getting his pizza and chips. You know, <laughs> but you know, he he was rock solid. He did everything that we've really been missing from the start of a mm. game for a hooker. I, I know Ryan Elias is a brilliant player and he's a very capable deputy, but he doesn't have that same carrying ability that, mm. you know, Ken Owens or Dewey Lake has. Mm. I mean, overall, my main feeling is there was just no heart in a lot of the boys. There was just no go. Mm. I mean, we were absolutely dominated physically across the park. He was just taking ball, standing still. I uh, just... There was no attempt at the breakdown to even try and slow down their ball. I mm. mean, I, I, I know they couldn't exactly play as two open sides, but we had two open sides on the park and we didn't make a single turnover. No, it, that's it, what it, I was thinking. You know, if, uh, if you're going to put two open sides on the park, you you have to be looking at attacking those rucks and going, at every single ruck, one of us is going to be there competing for that ball. And I cannot even remember a ruck where I thought, "Oh, hang on, we got we got hands on." You know, sometimes you can see hands on, and then they'll get driven back or whatever. I can't even remember a ruck where I I, I felt like we were gonna maybe possibly steal that ball. And I think that's just like you say, it was it felt flat and, it was and hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we should be used to it by now. We've watched, what, seven Scarlet's games so far this season. You know, we we should be used to being disappointed uh, that, by that now. Doesn't, that doesn't prep you for this. <laughs> I Being disappointed and being beaten off the park are two absolutely different things, aren't they? Yeah. I say it just, uh, the, the bright part for me was Ken Owens. Uh, um, I think he stood out quite significantly, but you know, he didn't have an amazing game. He he was made to look good because nobody else, no was. else was. Yeah, and I think that that was just disappointing. I think Alan Wynne Jones. Did he play? Did, he came on second half. He came on at half. No, I, I know that was that was the point I was making. <laughs> I, I can't remember seeing him at all. Yeah, well, uh, New Zealand targeted him because. You know, He's I old. think they scored, yeah, and and they just ran round rings around him and scored tries, and you're just like, ah, we just can't do that, you know, and I, I, I'm, I, yeah, I think there were too many players there that probably shouldn't have been there. I don't think Tipbrook should have been there. I don't think Alan and Jones should have been there. Um, yeah, you know, Halfpenny pulled up the day before on the captain's run. Bloody captain's run. He did run. not pull up the day before. It's it's an aggravation of the injury he had against Connacht. He has been struggling for two weeks and they were hoping he pulled through. There's, there's no way in hell that he, he just he just gave up on the on the what ten minutes into the captain's run. He's been mm. struggling with that for two weeks. I've got no doubt in my mind. Yeah. I uh, and are you like why? I know I know he wants to get to 100 caps for Wales. Like he's got 100 international caps if you count the four Lions yeah, caps. Yeah, 96 and he's on in there. Yeah. And I know that's a big kind of thing for him to get to. But, you know, we, we haven't got a backup. We, there isn't a full back backup. You know, there isn't anybody no, there that out I mean, and out as a backup. Just ridiculous. No, we're on. We're on to a fourth choice fullback. I think at the minute. I mean, you'd go Liam Williams injured, Halfpenny injured, Josh Adams in an emergency. Then you're talking the likes of, of Johnny McNichol, who, as much as I love him for the Scarlets, he's a winger. I know he came to us as a fullback, but you look at the way he plays. He's a winger. Yeah. And you're starting to think, you know, was that Jonah Holmes debacle really worth it? Could he have developed into a player that could have slotted in? Mm. And the decision to move Anscom to 15 and bring Priestland to 10, it, it baffled me a bit because they would have trained all week with Anscom at 10, Anscom at 10. Mm. Why, why, why shift him out? If you, your, whole, your whole attack is done to your 9 and 10. You know? I mean, I, I know it goes on a little bit more in depth than that, 
the day of your focal point. So why would you make that decision to move your 10 when you've been training with them all week? I'm not because... saying it would have made a difference to the result. Hmm. But then but, you know, Priestland can't... 15. I wouldn't put Priestland at 15. I've seen faster the tortoises at 15 than, than, than it. He's played at 15 a couple of times at Cardiff and he's been exposed every single time, just on pace. You know, you can you can get away with it at 10 in the sense that, he, you know, he's a distributor, he's a game controller, he's a kicker. You know, it's not, you know, Costello is a, a, a line breaker. You know, Costello uses his pace to put defences under pressure and, and what have you. Whereas Priestland controls the game probably better than Costello does at 10. But you put Priestland at 15 and you're exposed. Yeah. And you put Anscom at 15 and then you go, well, we're exposed at 10 now because, like you say, we, we've not really trained there like that all week. And we've built a game plan around Anscom and Thomas Williams doing to, and you just, it baffles me that that we've got to that stage where we've gone, oh, who, who have we got to play fullback? And there's nobody putting their hands up to go, you know, I'll play fullback. You know, I'm a decent fullback. You know, I, I saw a post somewhere, say someone advocating for Angus or Brian to be brought in at fullback. And mm. I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, are we really that desperate? I mean, mm. he's a good player and he, he is great for the regions, but he's not even a fullback. He's a he's a ten. He's a ten. Are, we, are we really? Are we really in that sort of position where we have to resort to, a, you know, a, one of the regions' second or third choice? You know, fifteens mm. in an emergency. And this is where I think my conversations about the academy started, where we are not bringing through enough quality in enough depth to fill, you know, by now we should have a full fifth, full first 15. And then whoever's injured, there should be somebody waiting there to step into their shoes. And when that yeah. person goes into their shoes, there should be a young whippersnapper coming up behind going, right, this is this is my choice now, this is my chance now, this is my opportunity to kind of show what I can do and push. And it just doesn't feel like that. And I, I don't think it's a coaching thing. I don't think it's a player thing. I think it's a systemic thing that has built up over a long period of time. This complacency of if you if you're in the if you're in the first fifteen for for if you're in that Welsh squad you're cushy you're sorted you're fine yeah and if you're not in there don't bother because you're not getting in yeah and and I think yeah. we we've had that attitude from the Gatland era up until recently and then we've tried to change so much with Pivac you know we're changing the way we're playing we're changing the structure we're changing the way people are coached. Oh, yeah, and it's everything is so different. Then you throw in the fact that the WRU can't come to a, a, a an agreement with the regions about funding for next year, and half of those boys are out of contract next year, and they don't know where they're playing. You know, and they don't know if they got a job. Yeah, so we're sending them into a World Cup. Yeah, we're twelve months away from a World Cup not knowing if they're going to be playing in Wales or if they're going to go and have to play in France or Japan or America, you know, that's not preparation. This is kind of something that I was talking with someone yesterday about. We're in a World Cup season. This should be the time that we're really bled in and getting our third and fourth choice players up to standard just in case. Mm. And he just looked at me and said, why will we do that? You know, the WIU are paying Tipperick's wages. They're not going to pay his wages and not play him. Mm. But then, you know, I think we're paying players. You know, they're, they're still playing Alan Wynne Jones. They're playing yeah. Tipperick. You know, these are players who are just well past. Yeah. And, you know, don't get me wrong, if somebody's going to give you 80, 90 odd grand to, to turn out and have a crack at playing rugby when you're what, late 30s. You know, yeah, you can have a go with it. Yeah, I'll take your cash. You can't blame this, the guys. You this know? is why I absolutely hate this stupid 60 cap rule. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not saying either of these boys would, you know, I, I don't know what they'd be playing like. But we got Corey Hill and Jake Ball, who are both only 31. They're mm. both multi-international players. They're both still playing in Japan, but they, they're not available just because they don't play in Wales. Mm. And you look at the performance of all three locks on the weekend, and it, it made me change my mind on... David Jenkins down in Exeter. I've been a firm believer in, you know, leave him at Exeter, wait till after the World Cup, then bring him in. But I'm like, Jesus, this is what we're offering. We may as well bring him now. We are struggling. Yeah. And I think, so I, I, I said on one of my other podcasts that, and it's quite controversial, but I'd bring Shinzer in at eight and push Fallot out to six. Or, or maybe even not play Falato, simply because we we need a different type of player. We need a different type of player, a different type of game. Yeah, and Falato. We need a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Yeah, you know, but, yeah. and we're only playing plan A at the minute, but, and it's not working. No, it's not working. But you can't ask Falato to truck it up. You know, you can't say to, you know like Keno. You can say to Keno wins. Cannonball, go bang, and and he'll he'll take up that ball five ten meters every time, and he'll he'll give it his all every time. You say to Ken Owens, a little sidestep, and then a little flick out the back to the to your ten outside you. Ken's not going to do that, you know. Falatau probably would. We need somebody who can play a different type of game to Falatau in that same position. So when you you say right, okay, let's get Shinzo on the park, six foot six, twenty stone. Lightning quick, give the boy the ball, let him run and cause some damage. Yeah. And and let's let's start building him now. So in twelve months time, when he comes up against the likes of France and South Africa and New Zealand, actually his confidence is there that I can take this ball forward. I can go and I can do something with it. Yeah. And he's the kind of player who has got the Falatau skills. He can truck it up 10 metres and he can flick it out the back, you know. I just think we're missing that opportunity and we're not prepared to take that chance on somebody like Shunza or, or some of the other boys that should be there. Yeah, I mean, I, I've looked at eight and I've, I haven't I haven't considered Shunza, to be honest with you. I mean, I've thought about maybe using him as a, as a seven like X that I've done, but you know, he, he would be a, a fair bit down the peg in order. It wouldn't exactly be fair on the other boys who are performing well. But I, I was thinking, you know, we brought Ratty into the squad in the summer and kind of like, you know, has he just been discarded or are they just are they they're happy for some players to not play any games and bring him in and not others, you know? And then mm. I know, you know, Carwin Tuapalotu has been touted as a future star, but, you know, he, he hasn't had any minutes either. And then it's the Morgan Morris at Ospreys, who is... Yeah, you know, yeah, Morgan Morris. He can, yeah. he, 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 can, he can do a fair bit. He can truck it up. He can do a bit of the fancy stuff. I mean, is, is it worth training him out? Because, you know, we, mm. we're not exactly blessed with, you know, five, six players in these positions that can do it. Mm. And I think that's consistent across uh, uh yeah across the park we we focused so long on look how good our sevens are that we've forgotten that there's another 14 players around there yeah and and we, we're not we haven't developed the rest of the squad the same way we've developed sevens in depth yeah and that's where we need to get to that's that's absolutely where we need to get to i mean I know I praised Ken Owens for his performance, but you know he really shouldn't be playing at the minute. He, no. he should be, uh, he, you know, in the squad, fair enough, build up morale. Cause I, I know the type of character that he is, hmm. but he, he shouldn't be in the twenty-three unless it's emergency. We should be letting Elias or Bradley Roberts get a little bit more accustomed to be in, you know, that first choice, that sixty minutes of international rugby, hmm. and it's, it's more or less the same everywhere you look. Because I, I look at tight dead and I think Thomas Francis, he knows he's the only scrummager that can really do it at tight dead. And mm. for that reason, we don't see him get over 70, 80%. And he's just there going, yeah, fine. You know, I'm going to be picked next mm. week. I'm getting my money. I don't mind. And 
it, it's just the same almost all the way down. I mean, I saw on Wales Online. I'm not I'm not gonna mention the the author because you know a lot of people will laugh when they hear the name. <laughs> but he said that our centers were clicking on the weekend. And I mean, Jesus, what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, no, North is not a centre. I mean, use him as a crash ball by all means, but he is not a centre. Mm. And I have no idea what is happening in that Welsh camp. But Tompkins is not the player we see at Saris. He is absolutely outstanding playing for Saracens. He is dancing around. He is looking for space. He is going through people. And he, he's just not doing anything. I don't think he's allowed to play the way that he can. I think some of it is he hasn't got a pack going forward the way he does in South. That gives you that space that you need to do the fancy bits around the outside. And I think that's it is so important to get certainly a front five that you can rely on to just hammer away at a brick wall and, and find those few meters and, and find a way to get you going forward and build that momentum and if we can't do the brick wall run then we have to find a way of going around the outside and creating space that way because at the minute we're not doing either and and we have to commit to one way of playing or the other and make it work for us because it isn't working at the minute I don't think the players are there to make it work Yeah, I, I don't think we've got enough quality players there. I think we've probably got a solid 15 and one or two positions we've got players underneath it. But other than that, that's it. So nah. so anyway, let's 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 finish with some predictions for the weekend then. Let's 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 be brave. Let's be bold. What are you gonna say the score is for the weekend to to wrap it up for tonight? To wrap it up. To wrap it up, we are getting absolutely hammered up front <laughs> by Argentina. There right. is no doubt in my mind if we put in anywhere near the same sort of performance, you know, aggressively in defence and attack, we are just going to get smashed. I, I don't know what the scoreline is going to be like, obviously, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just having a gander myself. I'm, 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 <laughs> Obviously, no one knows. No one knows what the scoreline is going to be. I, I'm not even going to attempt to look at what the bookies think it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I think it's going to be really close for about sixty, maybe sixty-five minutes, more or less. Again, and I just, I just think Argentina are going to, going to put a couple of tries on us. So I, I'm expecting, you know, probably, probably a fifteen, maybe a twenty-point loss. Oof. That's that's a big one. <laughs> well, I'm 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 going for something like thirty points to twenty nine or thirty to thirty one or so. I don't think it's going to be a massive just because those boys are going to be put through the mill this week. You know, they 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 know what the the reaction is around, and they know that they've got to play four but it's games. It's been the same reaction so many times. Yeah, but. Games. Yeah, and we're just not seeing it, which is why I'm so resigned. <laughs> but I think they know that you know they they've got to play four games at home in front of this this bunch of supporters. Um, they're one game down. They've got three games left, and they, 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 they there's got to be a reaction. There's got to be something. There's got to be something on Saturday that kind of shuts people up. Because there's a lot of people doing a lot of talking that we we should be focusing on the World Cup. We should be focusing on development. We should be focusing on, you know, how we go forward. We shouldn't be focusing on do we sack the coach? Have we got enough time to sack the coach and bring somebody else in before a World Cup? Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. Is Gareth I, Jenkins available? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'd take the call. He would be on that. I, I'm engaged, but. There we go, my friend. There we go. We'll um, we shall see what the we weekend brings, and we shall uh, uh, hopefully talk about the embarrassment next week. Well, no, we'll have local rugby to talk about next week. We'll have local rugby to talk about, and uh, maybe a, a a bit of feedback from the meet the coaches and uh, and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah. Well, if I can't make it, I'm sure I can get hold of a transcript or just a general idea of how it went. 
But just shout. Just just get somebody to shout from the back. Oh, hi, I got a question. <laughs> my, have a good week, my friend, and I shall catch up with you next week. All the best, mate. Awesome, mate. See you then. Cheers, mate. ta -da. You have been listening to the Westerer is Bester podcast from the Scarlet Supporters PEMS team. You can follow us on Twitter on Scarlet PEMS, find us on Facebook with Scarlet Supporters Pembrokeshire, or email us on scarletspems at gmail.com. And remember, West is best, but Westerer is Besterer. Cheers. Podcast Network.